Hello, and welcome to tomorrow's talk today. I'm your host, Michael Carpenter, and today I'm joined by special guests Julia Bogdan, Julia Bird, and Logan Thaler. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the growing epidemic of COVID-19, better known as the coronavirus. According to the CDC, the respiratory disease was first discovered in Wuhan City, China, and is now spread to 32 different countries and locations, including the United States. According to the Worldometer, nearly 2,500 people have died from the disease, and the number is growing by the day. Health officials can say that the virus can be spread through person-person -person contact and also contact with infected surfaces and objects. As the coronavirus has become a daily talking point in the news, multiple discussion points have arisen amongst the general public, and we are here to discuss some of those today. These include the conspiracy theories that come along with the disease and its ec economic impacts and the racist and xenophobic treatment of Asian people as a whole. Let's begin by taking a quick look at a clip about the conspiracy theories surrounding the coronavirus. Almost as rapidly as the coronavirus itself is false information about it. TW's Peter Roladal joins us now with more on that. So, I mean, we have these incorrect claims spreading on social media. What are they? Well, we're seeing a pattern that, unfortunately, has become all too familiar in situations like these. Uh, we're seeing, you know, false and misleading information that's kind of sprinkled with conspiracy theories. They're being spread to tens of thousands, if not millions of people on social media. Um, it's to sow confusion and to foment fear and cement hatred, really. One example is, uh, you know, the Chinese eating habits um, that have been blamed for the outbreak. The Chinese, as you may know, in some parts of the country in particular, are known to eat wild animals. And so when it was reported that the virus may have come from bats, uh, videos like these started circulating. They falsely claimed that the outbreak started because people in Wuhan eat bat soup. Now, there are several things wrong with this. Bat soup is not a thing in Wuhan. Uh, these videos are, in fact, from the Pacific island nation of Palau, where bat soup is considered a delicacy. Um, Chinese scientists believe that the virus came from bats, but they made no connection to, to soup, uh, this particular kind of soup. We're back here in the studio, and Julia Bogdan, you primarily research this topic. What are some words that you have? Well, to begin with, um, the World Health Organization Director General Dr. Tedros said, quote, misinformation on the coronavirus might be the most contagious thing about it. So like mentioned in the videos, um, bat soup is something that is eaten in other cultures that, you know, Americans aren't familiar with. So naturally, they're going to link, well, they eat bat soup and they have the coronavirus, so that must be where it came from. And but it actually has been proved to not actually be linked to bat soup, and that's just another implement of a racial stereotype. Additionally, Americans just aren't um, trusting China because China recently was accused of covering up SARS, which is a severe acute respiratory syndrome. Um, and that disease caused over 2,000 uh, diseases, 2,000 ca confirmed cases and over 100 deaths. Um, and so China was asked to cover that up and naturally people aren't trusting China because they were also asked to cover up um, things about the coronavirus because there has actually been widespread anger and grief across China over the death of Dr. Li Wenliang, who's a doctor that tried to warn people about the new coronavirus but was told to be quiet by the, by the authorities. He was forced to sign a contract saying that he wouldn't spread the information and he ended up contracting the virus and dying like that, so. Right, and I know back in the early 2000s, the SARS virus, that was a huge problem with China's cover-up. So I wanna open this up to the panel. What are some thoughts that you have on China? Yeah, um, sorry to steal it, but like, like you brought up in 2003, the SARS outbreak was kind of like the start of like us really realizing how much China censors their media. Um, and we know that they are like a socialist, their, their government's weird, there's, there's two parties, they have like their fake democracy and then they have like their empire democracy and it's everything to make the party look better. So okay. we can assume or probably shouldn't assume but we should like be aware that that could be the case happening now that numbers might be altered to make the party look the best. Yeah, absolutely, uh, that's a major concern that I have. Have they hidden this uh, for a long time? Are they, have they, they been looking for a cure for this whole time? Uh, what else do they know? Julia Bird? Well, <clears throat> but we're on the topic of conspiracy theories, and a conspiracy theory I heard was that China actually created the coronavirus in a lab, 
um, to control their population. So I think they're keeping it a secret and they're also creating it. So yeah, just a conspiracy, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you all for the discussion where you all brought up some valid points. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. So stay tuned for our next discussion on the coronavirus. Welcome back. And next, I want to fo focus our attention on the economic impacts of the coronavirus. Julia Bird, you've researched this topic. What information can you bring to us? Yeah, so um, it is said that there's about 60 million people on lockdown in China right now. So um, as you can assume, there's a huge decrease in tourism, tourism, like the economic impact is really getting affected. Um, for example, like hotels, airplanes, casinos, like any retail store, like they're definitely getting affected. People are just avoiding these like common areas because um, they're afraid of consuming the virus. Yeah, absolutely. You actually brought a video clip for us. So we're going to take a quick look at that. Empty streets cancelled flights, cities on lockdown. The coronavirus outbreak that originated in Wuhan in China has posed an unprecedented challenge to the Chinese economy and sparked fears of a global economic slowdown. More than a dozen Chinese cities are on lockdown to avoid the spread of the virus. It's the largest quarantine in human history. That means over 50 million people are unable to travel in and out of Hubei, a major commercial and industrial province where Wuhan is located. The impact on manpower aside, China is a major driver of the world economy. It's the world's largest manufacturer. It imports more crude oil than any other country. Chinese nationals are also the biggest spenders in global tourism. A drop in demand from Chinese consumers might spell trouble for countries that rely on its spending. Closure of Chinese factories has also disrupted supply to automobile and electronics companies around the world that depend on China for parts. Fears of the economic impact have sparked global anxiety. Stock markets have plunged, oil prices are falling, and several international brands such as Apple, Uniqlo, and Starbucks have temporarily shut stores in China. This brings back memories of the SARS epidemic in 2003, which hit China's economy severely that year. But China today is a superpower and the world's second largest economy. And what happens in China now matters much more than it did during SARS. The virus outbreak will likely be a dent to the Chinese dream, but a decline in the hefty Chinese economy will be felt around the world, and the impact of this will only be known in the weeks and months to come. Yeah, so that was a very interesting video talking about the economic impacts of the coronavirus, not only in China, but also the global scale, because we know that the stock market took a huge hit, but it's not only large companies that are having issues. We're also talking about small companies in China, but also in the United States. I know in Lynchburg, there's a cell phone repair store that they're going to be soon be, un be unable to do their business because the parts that they've relied on that came cheap from China, they're not able to be delivered because the city that they come from is under quarantine. So now I want to open this up to the panel. What are some thoughts on the economic impacts of the coronavirus that you guys have? Um, yeah, I think... Like you were talking a lot of like big businesses in America and the stock market getting hit pretty hard. Um, it is a problem. It is like diminishing, but these con or these companies make like, billions of dollars a year, multi billions of dollars a year. So a few months out of being on top of the market isn't gonna really like. I don't think it's gonna be anything that bad. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, so those, that's for the big companies. The big companies like uh, like Disney, uh, they're going to be able to survive. But what about the smaller uh, companies? Uh, maybe, Julia Bob, do you want to hit on this? The smaller companies in China that are being forced to close down. Well, yeah, um, I honestly have no idea like what they're going to do, but I'm pretty sure that this uh, quarantine is not good at all for any kind of small businesses because they're just people that aren't able to work at all. They're people that aren't able to purchase. They're people that aren't able to send things. Like That's definitely not good for small businesses. Like Logan mentioned, the multi-million dollar companies like Disney and stuff, they're going to be you know fine in a few months. They're going to take a hit, but they'll be okay. The small businesses are probably not going to be able to uh, fix themselves after that. You know, maybe like a few of them might, but like uh, the majority probably won't, wouldn't be able to. Yeah, absolutely. So Julia Bird, 
within your research, I know that you looked into the movie theaters. I know there's large movies coming out very soon, like Mulan. What are some impacts that this is going to have on uh, the future? Yeah, so um, in China right now, there's about 70,000 movie theaters that had to close. Um, and Mulan live action is coming out in the end of March. Um, and since um, China is the second largest movie market behind the United States, um, they're really going to get a hit with that. Um, and Mulan was supposed to be really popular um, since it is based in China, um, like North China specifically. So it's definitely going to affect their box office. Um, but again, they're IMAX and Disney, they're a big company. Like, they'll be able to sustain it. But yeah, absolutely. So we know, so we can say that possibly the big movie theater companies are going to survive. But what, what, what about the, uh, the people in China that are losing their jobs at this time? Logan, do you think that these people uh, are going to be able to go on for much longer without being able to go to work? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I mean, you're kind of thinking of their jobs and their positions and their careers there as we do in a capitalist country. Um, there, the wealth is so sporadically like spread that there really isn't small business owners that are really doing well right now. That like this. Um, quarantine yeah. is like stopping business for them. So yeah, I, th I think in their economy, if we look at through like their economy's eyes, I think they'll be just fine. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be really interesting to see in the near future how the Chinese government, if they'll be able to take care of these people, even though they're not being able to go to work. Uh, it's very interesting to see how they respond to this. But guys, that was a great discussion on that topic. We have to pay some bills, so we'll be right back after this break. We're back and ready to dive into the last topic of today's discussion, which is the racist and xenophobic treatment of Asian people as a result of the coronavirus. Let's take a look from a clip from the Chinese Global Television Network. The kind of racist or uh, targeted attacks against Chinese people in your part of the world, in the United States. Have you seen, have you heard incidents of this? Do you think these trends are worthy of our attention? Do they represent a, a rather general phenomenon or just really single isolated cases? Uh, there are cases, they are not in mass, but there are cases. Yesterday in New York City, in Chinatown, in the subway station, a person was attacking a Chinese woman because she was wearing a mask. Now, there is no confirmed cases of such virus in New York City or in New York State as of now. But people, and when you're looking at somebody wearing a mask, uh, they have that stigma. And I do you think this is racism. But this kind of racism happens not just on this incident, but in the past, when the Ebola uh, virus was going on, Africans from all over the world were being suspicious of that. So it, does, it is a racism, and, and you know, we have to be aware of it, and, uh, and we have to Now, Logan, you dug deeper on this topic. What other background information can you provide us? Yeah, so xenophobic uh, reactions to the coronavirus are happening. Um, they're not happening on like, a crazy scale that is necessarily something that we should be like worrying about, but they are. Like uh, Fred Tang said in the video that we just watched, there was a case of a woman in a New York subway with a mask on getting attacked, um, being told to like, stay away from her because they assumed since she was Asian with a mask on she had the coronavirus. Um, U.S. Berkeley also, they were quickly ridiculed for it, but they put out a tweet saying that xenophobia was actually a normal reaction to the coronavirus. Um, and yeah, like I said, it got a lot of backlash. However, like Fred also mentioned, it happened when the Ebola outbreak happened in Africa. Um, it's not a great reaction. It's not a reaction we should accept, but I think it is a normal reaction. It's, it's, it's a natural thing, but yeah, we should definitely worry about it. Yeah, absolutely. So we do know that when these outbreaks happen, no matter where they are in the world, whether they're Africa uh, in the past or Asia right now, um, we do see a lot of questioning whether how we should treat people coming in from those areas when there's these viruses or outbreaks happening. I want to open this up to the panel. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I think personally it's, it's unfair um, because just because I mean, the coronavirus is originated in China doesn't mean everybody in China 
has the coronavirus. Um, and I know I see like tweets or, or whatever, and they are attacking like these specific people. But I mean, they could come right back at us and be like, well, everyone in America has the flu. So like, it's just, um, I think it's unfair to attack them but like we, sh that. we should also like, yeah, the tweets and stuff like going against the Chinese, totally not cool, agree with that. Um, kind of like off your question of saying like, should we be allowing people in our country? And I definitely think it should be restricted, you know? Um, China specifically, because we know that's like where it originated from. There's no reason to, you know, let them come in when the virus is from there. Um, the Mecca in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia actually just did the same thing. They are restricting access from people or from countries that are known to have the coronavirus in an epidemic state. Yeah, absolutely. So, Julia Bogdan, do you think that uh, even though this is coming from China, and China is the country with the largest percentage of people who have uh, been affected with the coronavirus, should we be putting travel bans on people coming from China at this moment? Um, I don't think that we should ever implement a full travel ban ever because there's definitely reasons that people need to get from here to China, ex like things like that, unless it was something that was very, very, very serious. Like the coronavirus is serious, but it's, I don't think that it's serious enough to completely stop all travel from China. I know that um, the government did ask to delay foreign travel. So delaying it and putting sanitary checks and stuff, that's different. I think those are a lot more, a lot better, a lot useful. People can still get to where they're going. Things can still ship back and forth as long as we just make sure we have those sanitary checks as well. Thank you, Julia. I appreciate each of you taking the time to look into this topic further. As I think we can all agree, it is an area of concern. For our whole panel, I'm Michael Carpenter, and that was tomorrow's talk today.